It's on everybody's top five list of legendary creatures, the Loch Ness Monster. Sightings date back to the 6th century. And just when you think the creature and the legend may have died down, some new eyewitness accounts pop up to remind you the story is still very much alive. This is Loch Ness, a mist-shrouded lake in the Scottish Highlands. Its waters a murky black ink, dark enough to hide one of the most iconic and elusive beasts of all time. I thought I'd seen it all in Loch Ness, but this is just something I've seen that I can't explain, so. It's July 2020. Firefighter and lifelong Loch Ness resident Ross McCauley is overlooking the water from the shore when he records this. It's 12 feet long, about four feet wide, gray in color. It seemed to be moving into the waves against the wind, occasionally breaking the surface. Take another look. The image is hard to see, so let's zoom in, slow it down, and outline the figure in the water. And Ross's sighting isn't the only recent one of its kind. In September 2019, Stephen Chalice is on vacation when he snaps this unbelievable photo. I'm guessing that what I saw was eight foot long, but there might have been a bit more either end of that underneath the water. So you could be still looking, talking about a fish that was 10, 12 feet long. Whatever this is, it's massive. Field researcher Ken Gerhardt is one of the world's foremost experts on mysterious creatures and is writing a book on Loch Ness. He has spoken to hundreds of eyewitnesses who swear Nessie exists. The descriptions are very consistent, and uh, this leads me to believe that, yes, in fact, there is a population of remarkable, immense animals in Loch Ness. So are these just big fish stories or something more? We turn these amazing images over to our team of analysts to see if they would hold up under scrutiny. Our marine biologist, Dr. Shea Conger, begins her evaluation with the photos taken by Stephen Chalice. Could we be looking at some kind of fish? Conger says no. It's emerging pretty prominently from the water, and you don't see any protruding fins. Conger concludes that it must be some sort of massive marine mammal. But upon closer examination, she notices something else that seems a bit fishy. When I look at this image, I see a couple of red flags. If an object or animal is submerged in water, we would see a series of eddies and ripples around the entirety of this animal extending out pretty far. Instead, what we see are a series of regular waves surrounding this animal and a small trailing wake behind it. Based on those suspicions, we turn the photos over to our forensic video analyst, Michael Primo. I performed what's called a smart report of the digital image that was provided, and it reported inconsistencies with the digital information. So in layman's terms, the picture of the alleged Loch Ness Monster is not an authentic image. But what about the Macaulay video? We have no reason to believe it's a hoax. It's a pretty calm day, which means that whatever's on the surface of the water is not a wave or other associated item. So I can say that there is probably a large object here. So what is it? Conger says she can also rule out a log or any other inanimate object, but she does have a theory. A recent study utilizing eDNA was able to identify that there are, in fact, eel species within this lake. It's possible that some of these species could be large. However, they are as of yet undefined. So we have a split decision this time. The unbelievable photos of the Loch Ness Monster are exactly that, unbelievable. The wave motion of the wake was the decider. As for the video, we think it's real, and we think it's an eel. Still, sociobiologists believe that because of our history as a prey species, humans will always be fascinated by stories of animals big enough to eat us. March 2nd, 2021, Loch Innell, Ireland. In the sky, thousands of starlings gather in what's known as a murmuration because of the sound the birds make. Sports photographer James Crombie has been trying to get a good shot of them for 60 days. It became an obsession, and in my head, I, I said I knew there was something was going to happen, so we kept going, and they were ridiculously active that night. It was a sight to behold. James's patience pays off when he captures this. That's a bird. That looked like a bird. Hold on, a bird? Let's rewind and go through this video frame by frame. Sure enough, 
Here, the starlings form the shape of a giant bird. How's this for uncanny? Put the image side by side with a shot of a real starling. Overlap the two, and you explain it. Whoa, it really does look like a massive bird. It almost seems as if these birds are one giant unified organism. One theory is that the birds possess some sort of extrasensory perception. Perhaps they share this collective consciousness, and they're able to communicate with each other telepathically or on a level that we don't fully understand. We do know from recent studies that birds perceive and process images twice as fast as humans, giving them extraordinarily quick reflexes. I mean, that's an obvious explanation for how they can do things like catch insects in their mouth. So extrasensory perception, you betcha. It's just a sense that we already have, but in a way that we cannot see. So is this formation intentional? Or could we just be seeing patterns in something that's actually random? We've discussed this phenomenon in previous episodes. It's called pareidolia. To find answers, we turn the footage over to our experts. To start, what's the science behind starlings flocking together even when they're not forming intimidating shapes? First of all, they're safer from predators when they're in a large flock. Like schools of fish, a flock of birds detects prey earlier, and its swirling shape confuses hunters, which have a hard time picking out a single target. Secondly, they can stay warmer at nighttime. And third, they might be able to communicate information about the best foraging areas. But forming a swirling mass is one thing. Deliberately creating shapes like a giant bird requires an entirely different level of intelligence. Are birds smart enough to cooperate in this way and to send humans and predators a message? Some birds can communicate with people. Are you hungry? Apple. Apple, yeah. They have learned words, and they have understood the context of these words. You hear Marsha cooking? It's got to cool. It's got to cool. Great. And birds are actually among some of the smartest species on the planet, like chimpanzees, dolphins, and elephants. In problem-solving tests, parrots have proven at least as intelligent as five-year-old humans. So birds can reason and communicate in ways we once thought impossible. But Shuttler doesn't buy the ESP theory. It seems like it's a collective consciousness, but it's not. Each bird is responding to about six to seven of its closest neighbors. So if one bird makes a decision, it affects the other birds around them, which then goes throughout the entire flock. But look again, this shape of a bird can't be a coincidence, right? That is, unless you consider that James went out for 60 days and he and his companion shot tens of thousands of frames of this one murmuration and just five or so look like a giant bird. And some people may think that that was done intentionally, but I believe it's purely coincidental. OK, it's possible the giant bird shape is just a case of pareidolia. But starlings are smart enough to communicate with us, so it's also possible they created this shape on purpose. We've only started to grasp avian intelligence. So we're going to call the giant bird shape an unexplained phenomenon until we learn more. It's May 2012 in South Ayrshire, Scotland. Engineer and professional trainer Chris Croft is traveling up from England with his wife. I did a bit of research on things to see in Scotland. And there was this thing called the electric bray. And they said it's one of the weirdest things you'll ever see and you have to see it. Chris and his wife arrive at the Bray, which in Scottish means hillside. He gets out of his car, but then his car does something remarkable. This is a car rolling uphill. The electric Bray. Let's have a look at him from the other angle. My first thought was, is it magnetism? Is it some weird gravity effect? Because it absolutely feels like that. How can things roll uphill? And Chris isn't the only one to capture this strange sight. This is crazy. In January 2020, travel journalist Bridget Barbara showed that not only cars, but also balls seem to roll up the slope of this roadway. So what's the deal? The sort of notorious name Electric Bray comes from the fact that 
Many people who have witnessed this sort of anomaly feel that it had to do with electricity being installed in the area. They started to wonder if there could be some electromagnetic field that's moving objects up this hill. So let's take another look at this car rolling uphill. The camera catches it from multiple angles, and it seems clear that the car is going up the slope, contrary to all the known laws of physics. We don't have Sir Isaac Newton on staff, but let's see if our experts can figure out what's going on here. If it was magnetism that was dragging the car uphill, it would have to be tremendously big and huge. And we don't see that anywhere. We don't see a gigantic magnet pulling this object up. One experiment suggests a magnet would need to be six miles wide in order to pull a small car up a hill. And physicist Dr. Hakim Olushehi says there's another problem. Not every object that's moving up the road is made of metal. A ball is not made of metal. It is not a conductor. Our physicists believe the explanation of this strange video lies not in electricity, but in geography. We judge our orientation on the planet Earth by looking at the horizon. But the horizon here is not flat. It's tilted. As a consequence, the brain could become confused as to what really is horizontal. And perhaps that's the key to how you can ride something uphill. What appears to be up and down is all relative. You can get fooled, you can get tricked. The slope of this hill is very slight, rising only 17 feet over a quarter mile. This gradual slope surrounded by the unusual landscape leads to the confusion. And Chris says it can be hard to switch your brain back around. I was saying to myself, looking down this hill, this is actually uphill, and it must be just the shape of the mountain behind that's making me feel that but I couldn't flip it in my mind. Our verdict, this is an optical illusion. The surrounding landscape makes what's going down look like it's going up. Scientists say our brains take in so much information that in filtering some things out, they can make us see things that aren't real. We're in the countryside of central Scotland in February 2020. A local man named Derek Fable is braving the midwinter's day for a stroll. As I looked across the valley from where I was walking, I could see uh, that waterfalls were not behaving as normal. Derek zooms in on a waterfall named Jenny's Lum. It's not doing what waterfalls typically do, which is fall. It's defying physics and the laws of gravity and flowing upwards. It's really weird. You can see as we zoom in, the strange reversal creates an effect that looks almost like rising smoke. Lum uh, is the Scots word for chimney. So it is really awe-inspiring. It's tremendously uh, fabulous to watch. So how could this waterfall be defying gravity? Perhaps there's some invisible force at work here. Folklore suggests a mischievous, far-fetched source. Fairies. Campsey Fells, the area in Scotland where this waterfall is located, actually translates to Crooked Fairy Hill. Apparently, in Scottish folklore, every lock, river, waterway, and well had a name and a fairy that protected it. Could it actually be that fairies are messing with the water to protect their home? Apparently, fairies in Scotland can be nice, or they can be not so nice if you don't treat them well. These are all fun stories, but before we get on board with the fairy hypothesis, can our experts figure out what's going on with this inverted cascade? First, has gravity somehow been altered? Physicist Michio Kaku notes that while gravity does vary from planet to planet, depending on their diameter and mass, if Earth's gravity reversed, we'd notice. Maybe gravity went backwards and things began to fall up. If so, not just the waterfall, but everything should have fallen up. The entire Earth, the orbit of the planet going around the sun, and so the idea that you can somehow turn off gravity, reverse it like a light switch, no, gravity is not like a light switch. 
Gravity is what holds the universe together. You turn it off, and the universe starts to come apart. If gravity is still intact, could this strange phenomenon have something to do with the weather conditions on that day? If we look at the surface winds through this area, you can see that many of the winds all throughout Scotland were upwards in this kind of 25 to 30 knot wind range, which is a pretty healthy wind speed, especially if you're talking about a waterfall that doesn't have a very high flow rate. Jenny's Lum is what's known as an ephemeral waterfall, which only appears as runoff after a heavy rain. Since it's not connected to a permanent river or stream, the volume of water is much lower than you'd see in a typical cascade. Due to the low flow rate, Hin says these strong winds could explain what we're seeing. The high wind speed did seem to be strong enough to counteract the gravity of the waterfall. Winds, when they interact with water, can create aerosols. Think of a perfume, spray it in a room, and you find that these little droplets of aerosols float. Why? Because their density is near the density of ordinary air, and so they float in the air. Our verdict? Unusually strong wind gusts from a winter storm are causing the water from the falls to turn into vapor and spray up and back rather than down. April 2013, Connell Malarkey, a student in Northern Ireland, is in the middle of filming a school project on Loch Foyle when he spots something unusual in the water nearby. The shaky 59-second video shows a dark object of significant size moving rapidly along the surface of Loch Foyle before submerging beneath the water. The creature and its movement were smooth and silent. All I could hear was the bubbling of the water as it breached its surface. Let's take a closer look at this thing. At one point in the clip, as it appears to swim by a boat, the wake this mysterious creature creates looks as long as the boat in the background, which is about 25 feet. I'm not going after whatever that was. It had no scent. All I could smell was the fear from the cameraman behind me. I never believed in such strange phenomena, but upon encountering that strange creature that day, it completely changed my opinion of it forever. Field researcher Cliff Barrickman says recent research at Loch Ness may tell us what we're seeing here at Loch Foyle. Scientists have recently tested the water of Loch Ness in hopes of finding some sort of reptile DNA. Well, they didn't get any, but what they did get is an extraordinary amount of eel DNA. So if the Loch Ness Monster is an eel, maybe that's what we're seeing here. When it comes to alleged lake monsters and sea serpents, field researcher Ken Gerhardt says there is one thing almost all of them have in common. Virtually all of the locations where these things are reported to live lie within the same lines of latitude in the Northern Hemisphere, from 40 to 60 degrees north, with an especially dense concentration along the 50 degree latitude line. And so that actually builds a pretty strong case that we could be dealing with something unknown to science that prefers this particular region of the planet. The fact that Loch Foyle also connects directly to the North Atlantic Ocean only adds to the many possibilities of what we could be seeing in this video. So another thing worth considering is that we, what we could be looking at here is a cetacean or whale that has perhaps swum into this particular loch on this one occasion. There are certain species of whales, for example, beluga whales, pilot whales, and even on occasion, killer whales, that will travel from the ocean up into freshwater lakes searching for food. Could that be the so-called Loch Foil monster's real identity? Let's check with our experts. First off, marine biologist Dr. Shea Conger addresses the notion that the Loch Foil video could be an eel sighting. This object is clearly not an eel. Eels are really dark animals that undulate through the water when they are at the surface. And this object is a really large, roundish, lump with a lot of it exposed above the surface. And that, to me, really strongly indicates that this is not an eel. While Dr. Conger acknowledges that Loch Foyle's direct access to the ocean provides a multitude of possibilities for what this alleged sea creature could be, she also doubts this is a wayward whale. This isn't a whale. When we see whales above the water, we typically would see a blowhole and the whale respiring. So we would see a sort of mist coming from the object. 
This particular object or alleged creature doesn't seem to be exhibiting any types of behaviors. Rather, it's just statically moving through the water. For Conger, a more detailed analysis of hydrography raises serious doubts. The way that this object moves through the water tells me that it's being pulled rather than being propelled on its own. That's because it's cutting a straight line through the water column without any undulation, any disturbances in the water. Conger thinks the object may be getting pulled by a boat that's out of frame the entire time. With that red flag waving, we take the footage to our video forensic expert, Michael Primo. I do have some concerns with what we're seeing and the way that it travels in the water. From the frame-by-frame -frame analysis, I don't see anything from this object that looks like it's moving or flopping around or, let's say, alive. Primo then uncovers other details that sound more alarm bells. This was allegedly captured in the area of Lockfoil. And through examination of the ridgeline in the background, we were able to make determinations. It was actually recorded 130 miles away near a village called Hoth in the Dunleary Harbor. OK, we can say it's not an eel, not a whale. It's not even moving like an animal. There's speculation of a tow line, and though we can't prove it, it seems clear there's been some deception about where the footage was shot. Our verdict, this is a prime example of cake tarb. That's Irish for an American term we can't say on TV. But it rhymes with bull spit. <laughs>